You guys gonna tell me that my hat was falling off? I don't like you guys. Welcome guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome back to X Designer Breeds. Today we're gonna to get into it. We are going to get into the whole saga of teacup poodles and mini micro poodles and so forth. They don't exist. They really don't exist. I am tired of seeing it. I'm tired of seeing posts on Facebook. I'm tired of seeing posts all over, all over the internet, posts of breeders advertising teacups and micros and stuff like that. They are not a class that poodles fall into. I am going to go ahead and react to this video. This video has 17,000, over 17,000 views and it was posted back in 2020. And there are several videos like this on YouTube and several articles like this on the internet. And it's just absurd because there is, how can there be so much of this out there when it doesn't exist but anyways let's just go ahead and um i'm just gonna do a reaction to this video and see what it says a teacup poodle is the smallest variation of the poodle as it is smaller than the toy poodle a teacup poodle is an unofficial poodle category but it is one that is becoming increasingly popular due to the trend for keeping smaller dogs as pets okay so the video started by saying that the, tea, the teacup poodle is the smallest category of poodle. However, it is not it is not a standardized term, which I'm glad that they said that because it started out saying that it's smaller than the toy poodle and the toy poodle is the smallest type of poodle. There are three classes or three uh, categories of poodles. There are the standard poodle, which is bred down to the miniature poodle, and then lastly to the toy poodle, right? Let's just continue. While most people have heard of a teacup poodle, there are many things that people do not know about this breed. Because it doesn't exist. Welcome to iPet Guides, and today we will be counting down the top 10 interesting facts about the teacup poodle that you may not know. Before going into the video, we are giving away a free video series that teaches the quick and easy way to an obedient dog without spending hours of training and thousands of dollars. So make sure to get yours by clicking the first link in the description. Now let's get into today's video. 1. It has several other names. While this breed is best known as the Teacup Poodle, this is not the only name by which this breed is known. It is also known as a poodle, a French poodle, a teacup poodle, a barbone, a chien can, and a caniche. I'm cringing, guys. I'm cringing. I can't believe that a video like this is out there. I can't believe articles like this is out there when it's just not true. It's just not true. Two. They are smaller than nine inches. It all right, so they're smaller than nine inches. Any poodle that is smaller than 10 inches. So by the way, if you guys are watching me and if you guys haven't known or if you guys are watching me because of poodle content, poodles are categorized based on their height, right? And so any poodle that is below 10 inches is considered a toy poodle. So this video says that any poodle below nine inches is a teacup poodle. There is no such thing. There are three classes. There are the standard, miniature, and the toy. And the in the UK or the eastern part of the, the world, they have a fourth category, which is known as the Moyen or the Clean Poodle. And that is between the standard and the miniature poodle. Is its size that differentiates the teacup poodle from a toy poodle as the teacup poodle is less than nine inches in height. Generally, they also weigh under six pounds. However, as this is an unofficial breed, there are no universal standards for weight and height. All right, so the video says that it's an unofficial breed. What does that mean? Are you saying that it's an unofficial breed class, which that would be true, but a poodle is a poodle. A poodle is not an unofficial breed, right? 
Uh, but the teacup poodle, it doesn't exist. So if they're saying that it's an unofficial breed class, then that is true. Three, they come in solid colors only. That's false. That is completely false. All right, so poodles come in a variety of colors. In fact, I believe that there are 11 official poodle colors out there. And so since recently, we have known to include the party color poodles, the phantoms, the still a debate, the merles. I don't consider the merle poodle uh, an official color the brindles and so forth so this is false where it says that they come in solid colors only let's just continue the video because this is a whole lot of bs teacup poodles are never brindled patterned spotted or marked in any way as they are only available in solid color now how is that possible to have just a class or category of poodle that only comes in a solid color it's not possible unless breeders are particularly breeding for this this small type of poodle that they call a teacup poodle and they only put solid co colors together this is not possible colors these colors include black silver blue gray red cream apricot brown white and cafe au lait four they are a good choice for apartment living although they need a daily walk a teacup poodle can cope well with a <laughs> i'm sorry I had to laugh. You guys can tell me that my hat was falling off. I don't like you guys. You guys should warn me of stuff like that on video. Apartment life. They are a lively dog and will live actively in the apartment. However, they do not need a big yard or lots of additional exercise. Just spending time playing with your poodle will give them the burst of activity they need. Five, some teacup poodles are docked. Some teacup poodle owners choose to dock their tails or to have them docked hallway down. While this is relatively common in the United States, teacup poodles from many other countries are unlikely to have a docked tail. This is because this procedure is now illegal and considered cruel in countries such as the UK. 6. They like to lead the pack. Teacup poodles have a tendency towards dominance and want to be the leader of the pack. If you choose to have this breed, it is important that you establish yourself as the leader of the pack from the start. Otherwise, the dog will begin to believe it is superior to you and this can lead to behavioral problems that are difficult to deal with later. 7. They need company. Teacup poodles are sociable dogs. They enjoy spending time with humans and even like being around other animals. This need for company means that they do not like being left alone. Long periods in the house on their own can lead to anxiety and behavioral issues that are linked to stress. Therefore, this breed is not the best option if you work long hours and you are away from the house for most of the day. Eight, they are- They usually go for all types of dogs, all breeds. If you are working, well, technically speaking, some breeds are more prone to you needing to be there while others are just very laid back and it doesn't really requires less maintenance or less uh less of your time easy to train poodles are among the most intelligent breeds of dog and they are able to learn new things sure. quickly this means that they are very easy to train this is an advantage if you have limited time to devote to training or this is the first time you have trained a dog nine it is recognized on only one breed register most breed registries around the world do not recognize the teacup poodle as a separate breed to the toy poodle. For example, the American Kennel Club classifies any poodle under 10 inches as being a toy poodle and a teacup poodle fits into this category. However, the breed is recognized in its own right by the Dog Registry of America Inc. Okay, so that part of the video is true and I'm very glad that they specified that. That the AKC does not recognize the teacup poodle as a separate breed or a separate part of the uh, poodle cate uh, categories. And so it says that the Dog Registry of America Inc. by right recognizes them. Now, by right, any poodle below the, the, the size the, or the height of 10 inches is considered a toy poodle, including the category of what they're saying is a teacup poodle. 10. There are some health problems associated with the breed. Yes. 
Like all breeds, there are some health conditions to which the teacup poodle is more prone. One of the most common problems is allergies, so most teacup poodles must follow a strict diet. It's funny that they mention that the the, the common or the first problem that they mention here is the allergies that these poodles would have, but that is not the main issue. And I'm hoping that it's going to talk about it, but let's just see if they do. Other problems associated with this breed include epilepsy, diabetes, heart problems, slip stifle, and progressive retinal atrophy. Furthermore, due to their diminutive size, they need careful handling as fractures are common among this breed. That's true. Despite these problems, a healthy teacup poodle can live for up to 15 years. And don't forget to check out the free video series that teaches the quick and easy way to an obedient dog. So make sure to get- Okay, so I think that's the premise of the whole video. And there are several videos like this all over the internet and all over like uh, articles and stuff like that. It baffles me that there is so much out there. And the main reason why you have most of these articles and most of the terms considering micros and teacup poodles is because it's just a mar marketing ploy. A lot of people out there, they they love small poodles, they want the smaller sizes, and they may not even know that they're more prone to having diseases and carrying, uh, and it, what I'm trying to say is that they're more prone to you taking more care of them so they, they require more of your time so to speak because they're so small and fragile that they're more prone to like illnesses and diseases and so forth and so a lot of people they tend to want these small poodles and stuff like that but it's just a marketing ploy if you see a breeder out there that advertises micros and teacup poodles you need to run because it means that they don't know what they're talking about it means that they haven't done their research it means that they just don't know they're just oblivious to what's real and so even if they advertise the term teacup poodles they have to specify to you that this is not a standardized term it doesn't exist the three main types of poodles as i've said before is they're a standard miniature and toy and in the eastern side of the world like in the uk and the uh the Asian side, they have a fourth type, which is the Moyen or the Clean Poodle. It's it, it's just a marketing ploy. That's all that it is, and it it kind of hurts me um, because people or customers or people like you are vulnerable to believing that these poodles exist, and and so they often post them for so much, so much money, like the price is through the roof, more expensive than regular toy poodle that you're just buying something that's going to be more diseased and more prone to having certain illnesses. So Reader's Digest, they posted this article. Uh, let me see. They posted this article last year. It was on December 2021 and it says 17 too cute teacup dog, uh, teacup dog breeds. And they listed some things here and I could say I read the article and most of it I can agree with and they did specify here that most breeders tend to use this as a mar marketing ploy. It says breeders may also choose the smallest or the runts from other groups such as the dachshund and the hound groups or even the Siberian Husky from the working group. Teacup breeders may breed the runts with other runts and some runts with their own brothers and sisters of our parents, believe it or not. In breeding can raise the stakes of genetic uh, disorders and other health is health issues. Now you just have to be careful out there that the breeder you tend to go with and you have to ensure that you're asking for the health records of the parents or even if they have been DNA and health tested because that's very important especially if you're choosing choosing such small dogs, right? And most breeders out there will just breed for these small dogs because you a lot of you people out there are just wanting these small dogs just because they're cute and you can just carry them in your in your bags or handbags or whatever the case may be when it's just a marketing ploy just to get your money it really just is so it says what are the common health concerns of teacup dogs right um 
It says liver shunts can cause puppies to be small because they are unhealthy and cannot thrive. And there is this term in the breeding community or even in the in the whole veterinary community as failure to thrive and that may just be a, a cause right there. This can cause major issues later in life and decrease the lifespan of, span of the dog. So unless you've already done your health tests and so forth for your small dogs that are considered teacup, they may live, they may have a short lifespan. Otherwise you may just have a healthy, healthy dog. It says teacup dogs are very fragile. They have very fragile bones and can easily break. And so anyone who has a dog that's below five pounds, I'm just gonna use five pounds, should ensure that you don't have any small kids around. And even if you do, you're always there to be vigilant and supervise your kids with these puppies because they have very small bones and they are prone to be fractured or, you know, damage, cause damage for the entirety of the dog's life. So just be careful that, and even you as adults, you have to be careful as how you handle these, these puppies or these dogs. It says teacups are susceptible to infectious diseases given their immune, immature immune system. And that is true because usually these teacups are the runts of the litter and breeders would breed the runts to runts and try to get smaller or teacup uh, dogs. And it's just a marketing ploy guys. It's just a marketing, marketing ploy. And for those breeders who actually have breed small dogs, just like, you know, five and below pounds, it is possible to produce healthy, healthy dogs, but they have to ensure that these parents are health tested because otherwise you're just putting a dog, two dogs together without knowing what you're creating and creating such small, fragile things. They're more prone to these infectious diseases and having premature, prematurely being born and stuff like that. So you just have to be, you just have to be careful, especially you as customers just wanting these small dogs. Just be careful guys. All right, so it says the, the one of the, the health concerns here is that teacups are also prone to hypoglycemia. All puppies are usually prone to that, which is low blood sugar levels. And then the final one says, being so young, these puppies are less likely to know how to eat, hence their poor appetite and, hence their poor appetites and failure to thrive. All right, so it says teacup dogs. There isn't an official breed standard or temperament guide uh, for teacup dogs. They don't exist. All right, uh, it says any dogs that you see out there that are being advertised as teacups, they don't, there, there isn't a, a class or category for these dogs. Like I said, there's only standard, miniature, and toy, or in the, if, you're in the, if you're in Europe or the UK, that side of the world, there's also the Moyen, which is between the standard and the miniature. And that's a fourth class of poodle that is considered there. So if you hear someone advertising teacup Yorkies or teacup Maltese or teacup Shih Tzus or Pomeranians, they don't exist, guys. These are just smaller breed dogs. And maybe they're just using this term to classify them using their as their weight category. But... It's, it's just only a marketing ploy. It's only a means to promote these small dogs that are more prone to having these illnesses and diseases. And you, as a customer, will just need to have make sure that you have the funds, the capital for one, make sure that your finances are up there to take care of such a dog. And more, most, more than likely, a lot of these people don't even know what comes with these small dogs, right? They have them. They need these extra care to, you know, be, to be taken by the vet to ensure that their diet is up to par and stuff like that. And they're not just prepared for these dogs, right? Or they take these dogs thinking that, oh, they're just going to be cute for their, their kids and, and stuff like that. But you need to be careful. Babies aren't they don't know what these things are and they don't know how to behave around these things. You can have a baby fall on a puppy or a teacup dog, right? And kill it. So you just have to be careful of, you know, you thinking that you want a small, cute dog, not knowing the responsibilities that comes with these small dogs. Guys, uh, I'm going to link this article uh, below just so that you can read it as well. But there are several 
posts on Facebook. I see posts from breeders alike with customers asking for these micros or teacups and they simply don't exist. Do your research, guys. Just do your research. This is just a marketing ploy just to get your money because usually these dogs are highly priced. And the re well, yes, I remember my train of thought. I was saying that you have breeders out there that produces these dogs, but the reason why they are so highly priced is because of the responsibility that comes with them. You know, as breeders, we need to ensure that these dogs are going to homes that are going to take care of these dogs. You know, they they can afford the affordable nutrition. They can afford the, the vet bills and so forth. So these breed, these specific breeders that actually specialize in producing these small dogs, they are vigilant. And then you have those others that are just unscrupulous that doesn't even care. They just breed them just to get the money because they can price them up to $4,000, $5,000, $6,000 just for these small dogs. Guys, just be careful out there and do your research. There's no such thing as a teacup. Poodle okay all right if you guys like this video ensure that you subscribe to the channel go ahead and follow me on facebook and also instagram i post there daily especially on facebook if you are interested in multi poos toy poodles or even maltese currently i only have multi poo puppies you can visit my website i will link, link that down below you can also purchase the book that i wrote on raising multi poos i'll also link link that down below as well and see you guys in the next video oh don't forget to watch this video right here.